BBC News now on BBC One with Hugh Edwards and Louisa Preston. Tonight at 10, less government, more power to the people, the conservative vision for Britain. David Cameron's manifesto proposes extensive devolution of power and an invitation to people across Britain to join his movement. We don't just want your votes. We don't just seek your support. We seek your active participation every day, every way in running our country. It's a radical plan affecting key local services, but are people likely to heed the call? If we all stuck together, then more things would happen and they'd happen quicker as well, to be honest with you. Too many different people have got too many different views and opinions on things. You would clash, wouldn't you? We'll have all the election news and the day's other main stories. The Cardiff student murdered in his own home. His family appeals for help. We are worried in our own grief that the people who have committed this crime may do this again. Telling lies about the bank's finances, two former Northern Rock executives have been heavily fined. And an unexpected stop in Haiti as the First Lady makes her first solo visit abroad. In BBC London news, Labour attacked the mayor over his plans to cut police in the capital. And are credit crunch lunches a thing of the past as the capital emerges from the recession? Good evening. David Cameron has unveiled the manifesto which he hopes will help return the Conservatives to power after 13 years in opposition. The dominant theme is handing more power to individuals and one example is that parents could be allowed to set up their own schools. There's also a pledge on reducing the deficit, what's called the structural deficit, but it doesn't specify exactly how that could be achieved. Our political editor Nick Robinson was at the launch. He is the fourth Tory leader to say it's time for a change from Labour. For him, a fourth defeat is unthinkable. Perhaps that's why David Cameron cast aside warnings of an age of austerity today and returned to a message of sunny optimism. The Conservative manifesto was launched here at Battersea Power Station, a great British institution in need of regeneration, just like the country, they said. Its message helpfully spelt out, we're all in this together. It's an invitation to the whole nation. We will give you the power so you can take control. Be your own boss, sack your MP, choose your own school, own your own home, veto council tax rises, vote for your police commissioner, save your local post office, see how your government spends your money. Ah yes, money. The Conservative manifesto does not spell out how the Tories would cut the deficit faster whilst taxing less. Instead, their leader presented his new big idea as a way of squaring what looks to some like an impossible circle. Are you inviting them to believe that you can spend less, tax less and somehow magically get more? His reply, I'm only promising what any business leader would, to deliver more for less. Yes, we are saying to the British people that we have to uh, spend less. Everybody knows that. Every party is saying that at this election. But uniquely, we are able to say to people, we actually have a way of trying to get more for less. But what evidence was there, he was asked, that busy people had the time, let alone the willingness, to do more for themselves? I think the politicians have been treating the public like mugs for about 40 years, pretending that actually we, the politicians, have all the answers. Just give us some power, we'll pass another Queen's speech, we'll pass a few more laws, we'll issue some regulations, we'll spend a bit more money, and it will all get better. And it's a lie. The Tories say the ideas that they unveiled today amount to the biggest call to arms for a generation. That what this manifesto contains is a recipe to allow people in their own communities to take control of their own lives. Having a referendum, for example, on the level of the council tax or any other local controversy. Parents are being told that if they think their kids aren't getting the education they deserve, the Tories will sweep away the rules that make it difficult for charities and voluntary groups and groups of parents to set up their own alternative schools. And the Tories say that if your local pub or library, your park or local community facility are under threat, they would introduce a community right to buy scheme. Could you invest, what are you planning? 
Gordon Brown, on a visit to Derby, argued that Tory talk of more power to the people really meant less money for what the people really want. There's a complete hole at the centre of the Conservative manifesto. Nothing in it to help the recovery. Indeed, the measures would put the recovery at risk. Nothing to guarantee that our policing and our health and our schools are going to be properly improved over the next few years, but a plan to put spending in these down. Yeah, very well, very well. Nick Clegg on a visit to Bradford was equally scathing. David Cameron seems to think that it's just his turn to govern. He seems to think that he should just inherit power rather than earn it. You can't trust the Conservatives. I mean, they've just launched a manifesto in a power station that doesn't generate power. It's a, it's a manifesto of style over substance. People have switched off this election so far, David Cameron admitted today. He hopes his big idea will change that. But what he knows is that any big idea in politics carries with it a mighty big risk. Nick Robinson, BBC News, Westminster. Let's take a look at uh, some of these other specific measures in the Conservative manifesto. There'd be an emergency budget within 50 days of taking office. There'd be no rises in council tax for the next two years. There'd be a pay freeze for public sector workers earning more than £18,000 next year. There'd be a limit on work permits given to non-EU migrants. And voters would be allowed to force a by-election if their MP was found guilty of serious misconduct. So, the principal idea binding that Conservative manifesto is the transfer of power from government to communities and to individuals, encouraging them to take more responsibility for local services, including schools and policing. How likely are people to find the time needed, for example, to get involved in that? Our special correspondent, Richard Bilton, has been testing opinion in the constituency of Burton in Staffordshire. The second week of the Easter holidays and dozens of parents grateful for somewhere to take the kids. This is Horninglow Park in Burton and these are coveted voters. This is a seat the Conservatives have targeted. So how did that message of empowerment, of making it easier to take control of schools, go down here? Yeah, I agree with that because we're the ones that want best for our children and we know what our children need. And to be honest with you, if we all came together and did it, then I'm sure that if we all stuck together, then more things would happen and it'd happen quicker as well, to be honest with you. I don't think so. Too many different people have got too many different views and opinions on things. You would clash, wouldn't you? Those views count because this is such an important seat for the Conservatives. In fact, Burton is an interesting challenge for David Cameron. For starters, it's a very working class constituency with a few prosperous villages on the outskirts. And then there's the economy, which still has a high proportion of manual workers. Beer is still a big job provider in Burton. Two big breweries and four smaller suppliers like this one. Now, John's one of the owners, but he used to be an IT manager, and he's not convinced that empowering works. It's a sad fact of life that the people that potentially will get involved in this are the people who have got um, access to bear and, and will not necessarily add value. And what about those who serve and drink his beer? It's a good idea. It's about time somebody had, we got saying something. <laughs> On the face of it, it's a good idea providing it doesn't start to split communities apart. I met plenty of people today who liked the idea of empowerment, but others weren't sure how it would work here and whether it would really make a difference. Richard Bilton, BBC News, Burton. Uh, the view from Burton. Let's get the view from Westminster. Our political editor, Nick Robinson, is there. Nick, people power is, um, how can I put it, hardly a new idea. What's different this time? Well, it is the rework, as you say, of a hardy perennial for politicians, isn't it? It allows David Cameron to look optimistic. It allows him, perhaps, to avoid some of the tougher questions on how he cut spending to cut the deficit. But I have to say, Hugh, that the people around him and Mr Cameron himself do genuinely believe that they have a big idea here. They remember back to the time when ministers behind me in Parliament used to be asked questions about the supply of phone lines to people's houses. They say no one would think of that now, given the privatisation of that and other industries. And they argue that in future it will seem just as bizarre for ministers, for Whitehall, 
to be asked questions about how every hospital's run and every school, every council and every police service, because they say eventually those things will go the way of those private companies, not into the private sector, but with control wrested away from Westminster. And where is the evidence that people have the time or the appetite or even the inclination to take part in all of this? Well, there's good reason to be sceptical because we know whether it's directly elected mayors or school governors that people have been resistant. On the other hand, the Tories say that they've had 450 expressions of interest in setting up new schools, not only from parents but also from voluntary organisations, from educational charities and the rest. So the argument then becomes, is it a good idea? Labour will criticise it and say, well, it will take money away from the other schools uh, that are in an area and that will be divisive. The Lib Dems are saying, actually, it's not good enough just to sweep away controls. What you need is the government to spend more money on the poorest be poor performing pupils and the poorest performing schools. You mentioned the Lib Dems there, Nick. Um, I'm assuming that they'll be developing that theme and others tomorrow. That's right. Their manifesto comes out, the last of the three big manifestos of the UK-based parties. And their big idea is actually a simple one, trust. Nick Clegg, the Liberal Democrat leader, is going to criticise the two other parties for their manifesto launches for being in denial about the deficit, for having, in his words, airbrushed the idea. He will say that the Liberal Democrats are clearer about this because they've narrowed down the priorities that they would carry out in government to four big ideas, restoring trust, uh, green jobs uh, and other ideas that he will spell out. And they will also put, come forward with costings in that manifesto, spelling out spending cuts they'll make, tax changes they'll make in order to give those on lower and middle incomes a tax cut and make other people pay more. Nick Clegg, like all the leaders, is beginning to say to us, we know the public are not engaging. His answer to that, he says, is candour. We'll see if we get it tomorrow. Indeed, Nick, thanks very much. Nick Robinson there at Westminster for us. Uh, there'll be more about the campaign uh, a little later in the programme. And uh, on the BBC News website, by the way, you can find lots more detail there on the Conservative Manifesto launched today, the Labour Manifesto launched yesterday. All the manifestos that are being launched, they'll be on the website for you to see, bbc.co.uk slash